How you doing? Um, I'm not sure if anyone's around yet. If you have any, uh, if you have any questions, then you know you can leave them in the comments, and, um, and we'll see what's happening. Eh? So, I just wanted to start off today with just talking about Christmas a little bit. That if you're, if this is your Christmas without alcohol, if this is what your intention is, then um it's only really 12 days or it's only a couple of days really that you have to get through so um you know go for it it's uh this is probably one of the best times to um to stop drinking alcohol because if you can get through the first few days then you know if you can get through these two days then you know you're going to do yourself a lot of good um so Hey Linda, how you doing? Nice to see you. you know, it's like anything in this journey; it's just taking small steps um, all the way, and um, uh, you know, just moving forward slowly but surely. There's um, it's one of the things about Christmas that you just—I mean, this is my going into my seventh. Christmas, so um, January will be starting off my eight, eighth year without alcohol, and um, yeah, it's such a. Uh, I feel so blessed at this time of the year, to especially because, you know, before if this was my my, um, if this was a Christmas when I was drinking, being a Friday, uh, this would probably be around the time, about two o'clock in the afternoon when I would have stopped working, and. Um, started heading down to the pub and I've already stopped up the house with with alcohol hey Jared how you doing and um yeah this will be it I mean it's 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 weird to think about it you know somebody was asking me we did a, a live stream on on um having some plugged earlier on and somebody was asking about um you know how to get through that New Year's Eve without drinking alcohol and it's one of those things to put yourself into your own shoes on January the 1st and um, to see yourself having completed that whole task, um, to know that you've, you've, uh, you haven't got a hangover or anything like that. You know, hey, Tony, um, my hangover on January the 1st would, would have been a complete... Um, a complete Christmas hangover. So it would have been not just from um, New Year's Eve, but it would have been from the whole Christmas. And like I said, I would have started drinking now. Hey, Linda, um, from, <laughs> yeah, a couple of days before Christmas. So, I mean, now it, it happens to have fallen on a, on a, on a Wednesday. So uh, there definitely wouldn't have been any, any work done this afternoon, gone straight to the pub and then probably down to the pub tomorrow and down to the pub on Sunday. Maybe not on... Um, on Monday. Hey, Tim, how are you doing? Um, probably Tuesday, yeah, down to the pub, home early, Christmas Day, drinking in the house. Um, but then the whole of the Christmas season, I would have been drinking one place or another. And by the time the uh, the Christmas holidays were over, it would have been just a, yeah, terrible. So, hey, Rachel. So if you've got any questions at all that you want to ask, then fire away. Uh, Big G says, do you value money more now since you quit? Um, yeah, no. I mean, we were talking about this earlier on. I've got this this tea now, right? We, we, we're buying teas. And for a little 100-gram bag of tea now, we're paying 100 grams. No, for 100 grams of tea, we're paying uh, 10, 10 euros. And um, I've still got that thing of what, 10 euros for a bag of tea, you know. Um, but I'd have... I had no problem in paying two, you know, four four fifty, so two pints of Guinness for a tenner, roughly. So um I definitely have much more money now than when I quit drinking because you just got more time in your hands. Uh it's just a weird thing that not only do you do you have more time in the sense that you don't drink anymore and you've got that time. You you've you you do not have the hangovers anymore and you've got that time. But you've also got 
um, your brain is functioning better, so you can get more done with your time. So the more you can get done with your time, the better you think about things. You, you're just you're capable of a lot more, and you know that's included money. I mean, money is one obvious um, byproduct of that. You know, you just have more money because you can you can work more. Even if you, I mean, I've, I've worked for myself for a long time, but even if you're working for somebody else, you know, you make better decisions and. Um, I think you, you're, you're seen to be, you know, if you're working for somebody else, you, you, your job and your prospects in that job um, increase when you're when you're when you're sober, um, or your prospects of getting another job increase because you're putting yourself out there, you know. So, uh, Steve says, "Hi, Kev. Wanted to say uh, cheers for so much of your help. I haven't had a drink in eight months. Fair play to you, Steve. Uh, in that time, became a living kidney donor, got married, started my own small business." There's so much to do, isn't it? You know, it's just a living kidney donor. What is that? That's that's somebody you have a card. Um, hey, Jazzy, how are you doing? Uh, Linda Logan says, I'm a new sub, commented the other day on one of your videos, and I received so much support and encouragement for you and many others. Yeah, good stuff. It, it's just one of those things that this is a great community on, on YouTube. There's so many people. Um, that not only comment on the videos, but help each other out, um, which is, you know, that's that's what you, all you can ask from for people, you know, to try and give. Uh, you know, it's one of those things. I look, you look at other people's, you look at a lot of comments, and the internet can be a pretty harsh place. But I don't see bad comments or people taking the piss or anything like that. It's just very helpful stuff, you know. The odd one or two people. Um. Eric Hobau says, um, in one of your videos, you said you have pains in your liver three months after you stopped drinking. How severe were the pains while you were drinking? Um, I only really started getting pains, sort of um, th that side of my body, just up around, just underneath the rib cage. Um, I suppose coming up to when I was stopping him was one of those things that helped me to make the decision. I mean, I always made the decision about, you know, it was my my kids, uh, my kid, my Sean, and uh, let's talk about my kids now. It's um, uh, I have a granddaughter, and my son is with a girl now, and she's got a um, another boy. So, you know, we it's like uh, the the family is expanding. But yeah, it was for my my um, for my son, and now my granddaughter. But yeah, that that liver pain was uh, was something that. Um, and it wasn't really a, a hard, bad pain. You don't really get, uh, you know, unless you're way down the road and, I'm, you know, I've no personal experience of this, but it's it's sort of a soft pain. You know something is is there. And it's when you think your liver is expanding and um, touching on the outside of your your ribs. I think that's what's happening. Um, Robert Savage says, hi, Kev, just uh, started watching your videos. Uh, you talk a lot of sense, mate. Thanks for all your help. Merry Christmas to you and your family. Bob the Builder from Milton Keynes. Yeah, fair play to you, Bob. Happy Christmas to you as well. Um, Jason Williams says, my second sober Christmas in 35 years. I'm going to run eight miles home from work today rather than rolling home drunk and late in uh, a bad temper. Um, and the wife feels great. 13 months and never go back. Fair play. It's such a you obviously quit then before Christmas. I think it's such a it's a brave thing to do. But when you get through Christmas and you've you've um, uh, you've achieved what you set out to achieve, it gives you so much of a momentum boost, you know, that you didn't see from, um, you know, that you won't see at any other time of the year. I think maybe the holidays or, you know, if somebody somebody uh, if you get a divorce or something really strong um in terms of anxiety happens in your family uh yeah i got a dull ache in my side when i was at the height of my drinking intolerance that's basically it was really what i got it was just that dull ache uh steve clark says donate one of my kidneys oh my god to your wife fair play to you they took a kidney out of me and put it into her as her kidneys failed couldn't have done it if we were still drinking that's that's such a great a great story man wow you know that's um that would be a scary prospect in and of itself you know just to um but to 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 be able to do something like that for somebody that you really care about fair play um looking forward to my first sober christmas since i was like 16 
uh, to 20 odd years mental uh, ASMR Muzz. Uh, Michael Newman says, 20 days in and you've helped me every step. Thanks, Kevin. Looking forward to my first sober New Year's celebration in 30 years. That's brilliant. Um, <clears throat> Jason Williams says, ah, the liver ache, sheesh. Uh, bad skin, bad asthma day, bad temper. Um, got really bad acne, ache, or back ache, yeah. Uh, hangovers, guilt, all gone. Yeah, I mean, it's... That was one thing that, that that it was. I think the pain for me was just all over my body. So you know, the 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 liver was just one of those things that just added to that. It wasn't a huge thing, but um, yeah, backache. I mean, I still get aches now. It's not as if the aches and pains disappear when you stop drinking. It's not a magic cure all. But I think you're you you put yourself in much a much better place to control these things. So, um. Linda Logan says, I'm suffering from extreme fatigue lately, finding it hard to even wash the dishes or pick up a broom. I hate this feeling. Are you still drinking, Linda? Or, or have you stopped? Um, Jason Williams, Christmas was the best excuse to drink. Yeah, for me too. It was just one long drink festival that um, that never stopped. You know, it was... Um, I, you know, for me now, Christmas is is really about trying to um, rethink my own expectations for a start, but rethink my own traditions and build new traditions. I mean, we, we've just gone out, like I say, we've bought um, a load of uh, um, a load of teas and uh, we spent about 60 or 70 uh, euros on teas, but it's well worth it. So it's just, it's just bringing those things back into um, your own, or reviving, reviving some of the things that you want from your own traditions, but bringing in new things, you know? and just to get through that Christmas and enjoy yourself. That's the the whole point. We've just done a course over on habits unplugged, um, for called reframing the holiday season, and that was, you know, the crux of that was really to to get people into their heads, not only to think about. Um, getting through the 12 days of Christmas without putting alcohol into the mouth, that's the first and foremost thing. But to do it while you're having fun and to reframe things in your mind, to um, reimagine yourself, to break down your old uh, your old traditions and what you would do normally with that Christmas time, and then to, to move forward and as you're moving forward, to break down those steps as you're going forward. And, you know, this, I think it's such a great, um, it's such a great feeling to go through a time like this, especially when you're once you've you've got it into your head that reframe is possible and that you can do this. And that, you know, when I'm talking about reframing, I'm talking about it from the perspective of um, what it means to you. So you take an alcohol out of it, what you left with. For me, there wasn't much else left. You know, there was obviously giving my kids present and you know being with family and all that kind of stuff. But it was with family in a really. Uh, tenuous way you know very you know when you when you're drinking it's it's an internal thing you were the only one that gets the buzz out of it everyone else gets the annoyance you're the one that gets the buzz and you know the buzz doesn't last long uh, once you get past that first few sips and you know you've you've satisfied the urge it's all downhill from there so um linda logan yeah um uh, i drink at night okay yeah i mean th this is the thing it's when you stop, you're going to find those first. It's like anything else. When you stop doing something for uh, the first while, you're going to um, you're going to go through a lot of discomfort, you know. But it's only for those first. We call it this preparation stage, and then there's transition stage, and then there's transformation stage. And that transition stage is between the time that you stop drinking alcohol and the time that you get to um, 30, 60 days into this. And then most of those days, that normal, um, the the regular triggers, the things that are triggering you on a regular basis, most of them are gone. So you've sussed out eighty percent of eighty to ninety percent of your drinking triggers and what causes you to drink by that stage. Uh, and then you're just dealing with the transformation: is turning yourself around from the person that you are, the drinker in the drinker's mind, into the type of person who looks at alcohol and says. What we, you know, it's just why? Why did they ever do that? You know, it's just 
it doesn't make sense. Uh, Jin Hugo says, hi there, I have one question. I have a cycle of uh, a few non-drinking months, then a, a, a few day binging cycle. I would like to hear any recommendations. Stop drinking. I mean, it's the thing about what happens when you, when you, it's another form of moderation. I'm not going to give you any recommendations about, well, you know, slow down your drinking during your binges or anything like that because what you're dealing with is a drug and the drug once it gets into your system you're you've got a tolerance and even if you go off it for a couple of months your brain remembers the tolerance levels so it doesn't take long before when you start again your body gets back to that same tolerance levels and when you're moderating when you you're um you're doing any form of moderation whether it's you know cutting out for weeks on end and then going back and binging or you're like I was doing, you're taking one or two days out a week and then you're maybe drinking for four and not drinking for three. You're on this continuous vicious cycle. You're just going backwards and backwards and backwards. And it's a fight that you have to, you're going to see playing out for the rest of your life where you stop drinking, stop the poison, you stop the toxin. And it's a battle that you only have to fight once. And you have to deal with it. You have to go through the 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 pain, so to speak, or the you know. And it's not even pain; it's discomfort. You you have bad feelings once you go through that once, and you get on, and you start to change your life around. You never want to go back again. So, <clears throat> um, uh, ASMR Mo says uh, massive thanks for all the videos. You actually started me on the journey. Um, uh, I've since gone through a lot of other books for various authors and just finished Alan Carr's one. It's the only book I re recommend Alan Carr's one because it's the only really sense. There's another one from Jason. Uh, why is Jason Statham coming to my head? Uh, Jason, I can't remember the guy's name, but it's a very similar one. The, the guy worked with um, Alan Carr and I think he took a lot of his ideas, which I'm not, you know, like it's, it's good that it's out there. Um, Choice 12, Osborne. My problem is every time I stop drinking in my home, then I have no desire to do anything, get bored out of my brain and extremely depressed. That's what I've been talking about with the with the uh, transformation. You know, the, you've got to change your life. You've got to change yourself so that you are doing other things. Uh, you know, when you get to that four-week period or eight-week period, it's like if you think about that, you know, you've got a habit there that's got alcohol in it as the main source of your whatever you're using it for. For me, it was stress relief. It was to sleep. It was to relax. It was to socialize. It was so many other things. And more and more things were getting sucked into my life because of that. Right? And you pull alcohol out of that light, that your life like that. And you've got all these little gaps then that are left, you know, that you're thinking, what the fuck do I do now? You know, this is just something that is. And you're lost, but you've got to gradually change it. You've got to change what, what relaxes you. You've got to change what entertains you. One of the best things I can tell you is to get out of the environment that you're in, especially for the first few weeks, you know, try and get into the gym or go walking or do something in the evening that you're not, the time that you would normally be drinking, do something then because, yeah. Um, uh, that Matt, Matt says, uh, what final relapse did it be? Uh, it wasn't a relapse for me. It was, I mean, for me, it was always continuous drinking. I stopped for uh, 10 months way back when, um, probably five years before I started, before I stopped for good. And I was, um, I got a DUI. Um, I stopped because, I, you know, like it was, my job was on the line, my business. Um, and yeah, and that was it. But I knew I was going to go back onto it after it, after a year. But that final time it was my son um we moved to spain my son was in in uh, ireland still and he was coming over to visit us and when he was coming over to visit we were doing what i as i was saying before you know you get used to doing something so celebrations is another thing that i use drink for and of course i pulled my son into that you know who was in his sort of 18 19 20 at the time around that time anyway and um yeah brought him around the pubs and that's what I thought was this is going to be my life from now on with my son. This is my relationship with him. And I thought, yeah, fuck that. I can't do that. You know, this is not good. So that was the time I made the decision to, to change. So <clears throat> uh, Jamie Donaldson says, hey, um, Trace, you're not alone. Um, let me have a look. Uh, 
Uh, Linda says, um, still drinking, but for the first time in 20 years, I want to quit. I'm scared. Is it normal to feel? Yeah, it's normal to feel scared. You know, this is something, you know, I, when you're changing alcohol, it's like it's not just the alcohol that you're taking out of your life. You're taking, you're, you're taking bits from so many different parts of your life, you know, uh, and you've got to reframe or rebuild some of those parts. I mean, a lot of the stuff you can take from your past, it's not just, a, um, it's not just, a, a, where was I, in terms of, um, you know, you're not going from, trying to become a, a completely new person it's not like that at all you you go from being somebody into being somebody else and you gradually change and the scariest time is the scariest things are up here in your head you know um that's when you're going to scare yourself the most but it's having those understanding that it, it is um your it's your choice to do this you have to have that choice to do this you've got to commit to do it you've got to have patience perseverance you've got to be um, you've got to have sort of a positivity about the whole thing and know that you're moving into something that is better. Um, you know, there's, there is so much positive about, about stopping drinking alcohol. This, this <laughs> people have a positivity about drinking that is false. You know, there is no positive about it. You know, you've got an instant gratification and anyone who drinks will tell you that it's only that first drink, not even the first drink. Once you satisfy the urge to start drinking again, that's it. You go. It's it's downhill from there. You know. I mean, the buzz. You know. Yeah. Maybe when we were kids. You know. Um. Um. Three canth ready. Uh, Tala says, "Thanks, Kevin. I was in and out of drinking before this. Now I'm ten ten days sober, feeling relaxed, having sound sleep. Even I reduced my weight a bit. Thanks again. No worries." Um, back home, waiting till seven. I'm sick. Okay. Um, choice 12 Osborne. What, what will help with the boredom and depression when I stop? I get really bored and don't have a desire to watch TV or do anything at all. It depends what you like, mate. You know, it's, you know, for me, when I stopped, I was just walking. I, I walked for, for miles. Uh, honestly, I, I was walking for in kilometers here in Europe. I was doing, 20 kilometers a day, so whatever that is in, in miles, it's probably about 12, 13 miles every day. Uh, and it was just any time that I felt shit or, you know, bored or anything like that, I get up and go go around the block and walk, you know, and it's just, you have to find other things to do for yourself. Like I say, go to the gym. I mean, it depends where you're living. You know, if you're living in a city, you know, like I was in New York there recently and that's some city for stuff, you know. I mean, if you're living in a city, you could never run out of things to do there. You live in the countryside, that's where I'm living now. For me, it's walking, it's going out for a drive, it's doing different things, you know. I'm 53, so it's like it's easy for me to occupy my mind. If I was 23, I don't know what I'd be doing. Um, probably out cycling, and you know, I want to get into climbing, you know, there's, there's just stuff to do. I don't know. Um, Jason Williams, I went from thinking uh, I couldn't be me. I get what you mean. <clears throat> I think that's that's the definition. We change who you are. So you change the you that you are all the time. You just don't realize it. I mean, everything is – most people go through changes because change is forced on them. And, you know, like I said, we're, we're getting into a Christmas here where this year three people died that I know that are normally part of our Christmas circle. So that's a change that you didn't, I didn't expect at the beginning of the year. I wouldn't have asked for, but it's happened. So um, that's a change that's forced in most people. That's what change is. You know, they grow older and they feel shitter and they lose jobs and whatever happens, you know, but they allow the <clears throat> life to take over when you don't drink anymore. I think it's, it's not, an, it's not um, a given that you're going to go out there and change your life and make all the positive changes you've still got to work at it but it gives you that headspace to do it you know you're not going to be able to do this if you don't put in the effort and uh, you know so um but that's that that's the thing is if you can get it into your head that um that you are who you were um regardless of of what you do you know you change along with yourself and 
just think about the, you know, alcohol is never going to give you something which is, is beneficial to your body. I mean, whatever it is that you think you're getting from the drunken feeling, it's not doing your body any good. Your body doesn't like it. Um, <clears throat> uh, Jamie also says, choice, I read and write. Yeah, that's one thing. Um, Linda Shanklin, for me, it was about three to four months when I, I lost any urge to drink. Yeah, I mean, it's different, different people. Uh, are going to have the same thing and a lot of it's to do with what you're telling yourself inside your head you know um i mean for me maybe 30 days and uh after that i wasn't really thinking about alcohol too much but having said that you are you're also going to get to a stage where you know six months after i got a call off a mate of mine and um I was out walking. He, I was talking this earlier on in the other one, but he, he, he called me up from, I said, where are you? What are you doing? He says, yeah, I'm going down to the pub, going down to the Bre uh, <clears throat> the Diamond, I think it was, and then off to Brogan's. And I could have said to him there and then, I'll be down, I'll join you, you know, don't worry about it. Um, and it shocked me because that was six months later and I hadn't been thinking about alcohol in a long time, you know, apart from doing this stuff. Um, and you know, really, but it's one of those things that happens. It's just you can't control what comes into your head. What you control is what you do with that. So, um, Steve Clark says you have to stay active, get out of the house, do new things. You have to, you have new twenty four seven life with so many new things to do. Couldn't agree more. Um, Tony B Valley. Uh, Andrew O'Connor, there are so many gains in not drinking. I made a list of them and look at it when I'm tempted. It's not easy, of course, but I find the buzz from not drinking is better than the drinking one. As you grow into it, you know, you grow into a new kind of a buzz in your life and you only get that from experience and other things. Uh, that's a great way of doing things as well, by the way, making a list of stuff. Um, I, Kevin Millis from Ohio, uh, so happy you're still going strong. Yeah, me too. There's no chance I'm ever going back to that crap life anyway, you know, so don't worry. Um, Choice 12 Osborne said, what book is it that you were talking about? Because I'm new to your channel. Um, it's a book called uh, Alan Carr's How to Control Your Drinking. I think it's How to Control Your Drinking. But just look up Alan Carr, A-L-L-E-N-C-A-R-R. -L -L -E -R and uh, it's just look up control your drinking you'll find the book on amazon it's i think it's a tenner or something like that it's not too expensive but it's a good book to get your mind in the right place it doesn't offer you much in terms of step-by-step -step stuff um but it does give you a breakdown of a lot of the mental stuff and i think that's much more important um you know you th there's a lot of books out there on alcohol and a, a lot of them are written by people who either are doing the same thing as Alan Carr was doing, and he wrote this book maybe 20, 25 years ago. He's dead now. Um, or there are books from people who don't know the fuck what they're talking about. You know, they, they haven't never had a problem in their lives, and they're coming from uh, white coat and, you know, stethoscope around their their, their shoulders, and they're, they're just coming from a perspective of having studied some kind of a psychological thing, you know. Um, you know, I'm doing a psychology degree now. It's one of the things that I've started since I've, I mean, I'm three years into this now. And some of the stuff they talk about, I swear to God, is crap, you know. It's, you know, they're, they're talking about, they talk about studies which are meant to um, be put out for the general population, but these studies have only been done from a very small selection of students in a college, you know, and it doesn't, doesn't replicate that out into the wide world. So I'm not saying it's all crap. There's a lot of great stuff that I'm learning. But, you know, there's, there's a, a lot of stuff that you have to take and you have to look into the, you know, what is this study? Where does it come from? How is it, how is it relevant? You know, and a lot of it's just not. And that, that's, I find a lot of that with um, alcohol books. You know, I, I when I, I first stopped drinking, I was buying so many alcohol books. I mean, I've got probably at least 50 up there in that bookshelf that I've read, but I just haven't given me any, you know, you get one or two things out of them, but yeah, I wouldn't recommend them to anyone. Um, Andrew O'Connor, good luck to everyone working uh, to break the drinking cycle. Cheers, Andrew. Um, Linda Shanklin, walking and biking helped me a lot. That's that's it. I find walking is a great help to me too, Linda. Andrew O'Connor. Uh, Yin Yuga, one final question. Uh, with a few months of no drinking, I think less of the alcohol and not really feel the need. 
um, for it. <clears throat> uh, ah, right, so what is a good way to avoid alcohol when I get one or two of those sudden urges for a drink or two? Um, in your head is the best thing, you know. I mean, there's no, there's no trick that I can give you that's going to stop you from doing it. You know, if you if you put your head onto that level of um, you blindly follow and it's like a robot, then, you know, I'm going to head down to the poor bar, I'm going to head down to the liquor store, and, you know, there's nobody going to stop you. But there's so many different uh, stopping points that you can make along that way and say, what the fuck, you know. But you have to make your, your mind prepared. It's not it's not what you do in the second, in the moment that counts. It's what you do before that to not even to prepare your mind for that moment, but what you're – you know, my life has, has got to where it is today because I'm doing other things and I'm doing so many different things in my life that it, it has, um, I would ruin everything, everything if I stopped, if I started drinking again. So, you know, the, the, the chances of me starting drinking again are zero. It's just not going to happen. And it's not just because of this. It's because of the way my relationships are better. My finances are better. My health is 10 times better. I was feeling like um, an 80-year-old guy when I was just in my mid-40s. I feel better now. Uh, and like I say, I'm starting off my eighth year now alcohol-free. Um, and I can do stuff now in the gym that I wouldn't, wasn't even able to think about back then. You know? Um, you know, I'm doing all sorts of stuff. It's just a big, more active life. So you have to think about this stuff from beforehand. Um, you know, and that's the, the, the answer. There is no... You know, I mean, you could lock yourself in a room, you know, and throw the key out the window. That's a, a solution to, to doing something, but it's not a great solution, is it? You know, so it, it is getting it into your head that, you you know, this is not going to happen. And then when you get the idea, it's like, yeah, whatever, you know. It's not the idea that comes into your head. It's how you respond to it. That's the big thing. Um. Uh, choice 12 does anyone know yeah that's the book anyway I told you that um, okay where am I now um, Jacob Mokritsky sorry um uh, hey Kevin, got your thirty-day rebook, uh, reboot book on Audible. Been a good lesson, informative and uh, motivational. That was something I did a couple of years ago. I think three years ago now. Um, uh, Paul G, I Kev, hope you have a great Christmas and a new year. Thank you for your videos um, over the year. Uh, they're a great help. I've cut down a lot, but I find it difficult to stop completely. What's your best tip? Um, Best tip I can give you is to go over and uh, we've got a trial on our seven um, habits unplugged. I mean, it's the thing is, you can. The best tip I can give you, people don't listen to that because they want to hear a tip that is self, um, right? That you take in and you say, right, well, this is emotionally now helping me to stop. That's what I had with, with Sean. It just, I felt so shit i felt such like a crap dad and a crap human being and it was all the other things that were all bouncing around there as well you know having no money and my health suffering and all that kind of stuff was all there right but you're doing it to yourself so it's sort of like it's a self-sabotage that you don't not that you don't mind it but it, it doesn't have the same impact but when you get an emotional kick up the ass like that you know from the, something that you're doing to somebody else somebody else that you care about the most in the world. And that's what I felt about my son. That's what really did it for me. Uh, and then no matter what else happened, nothing else was going to stop me from, from, so, you know, if, if you can get that inside you, then um, you get that idea of that's the thing I have to do is not put the alcohol into my mouth and wait out anything else that happens, uh, figure it out going forward. <clears throat> Uh, Chris Hodgson, hey, uh, Kevin, you've helped me so much. Tomorrow will be three weeks, not a drop. I'm not going back. I no longer choose alcohol and I don't miss it. So you're right. You have to reject it every time. Sorry, I've got to get a cup of tea, lads. 
I'm losing my uh, voice. This is I've been talking most of the day. Mm. Alcohol explained is amazing. I think that was a yeah. I've got that book somewhere. That's the one easy way to control alcohol. Um, uh, the Berg Show, are you in the UK or Australia? I'm in Spain. Um, I was born in the UK, but I consider myself Irish because I lived in Ireland for most of my life. Uh, my dad's Irish. So, um, Jacob, trying to listen to Watch Up Work will post a video onto this stream on your channel. Yeah, this, this should be there on the channel anyway at, at the end of it. If not, I'll find some way of getting up there. Uh, Adrian um, Brian says, Hi, Kevin. I'm loving the extra money since quitting. Have you spent your extra cash on anything special? Thanks for the inspiration. Yeah, oh, tea. tea is what we're doing. Um, I bought myself a Land Rover not that was long ago, um, but that's uh, in the shop now, getting a, a rebuild. So, yeah, I mean, it's just, like I said, it, it's one of those things that you don't realize how much money you're not only spending on alcohol but you're losing because of alcohol because every time you're pissing your head up right and you're getting your head into that state where it's drunken and you've got the fog over you that doesn't just last from the time that you stop uh, it doesn't stop when the time that you stop that carries on you know so that fog fogginess goes on even when you think that you're sober your brain cells are not functioning properly you know not functioning as a person who, and you don't realize it until you stop and you realize how your brain can can take over i've i've known people um you know spoken to some of my clients and people that are doing the courses and they just say why is my brain speeding forwards like i'm on some kind of a drug now that i stopped drinking and it is that effect that you just you're you're the the toxic effect is has worn off and your brain has opened up the amount of stuff that you can do once you put your mind to it and you get your ass up off the couch. I mean, for me, I was a right lazy bastard. I didn't want to do hardly anything. And it was getting there. And uh, once I stopped drinking, I just had that energy, physical and mental energy, to do the things that I wanted to do. And, you know, as I say, the money becomes a byproduct of it all. Then. Um, Linda Logan, a family friend of 30 years, died two, uh, two days ago. Yeah, my, one of uh, my my sister's husband, her, um, his granddad died yesterday, eighty nine. Oh no, sorry, ninety ninety three. He was so good, good, um, a good age. And uh, Jazzy Rose says, "Don't pick up the first one. Try uh, talking to someone that is recovering." Yeah, the Berg Show. <clears throat> Do you believe in the theory of harm reduction um, where you basically taper down and drink less? I think as a as a um, as a strategy for getting you off the alcohol, yeah, as a strategy for just continuing to use now. You know, it's a fool's game, like I say. If you if you continue to use, you're gonna continue to handicap yourself in life, you know. And when you handicap yourself in life, you're not only handicapping yourself in one area, you're handicapping yourself across the board. So I think as a, as a strategy for reducing your alcohol so that, you know, we, we teach this in the preparation phase in Habits Unplugged is you stop drinking. So you've got 14 days or 15 days before you actually stop. And in that 15 days, you're reducing your alcohol consumption so that it's a safe to do it. I mean, I think for most people, it's going to be safe anyway, but just in case it's good to, to have that, um, that safety net there, but also in that 15 days, you have four days where you don't drink anything. So it's getting your mind used to not drinking. And most people have that anyway, you know, so, but it's just to give people that lead in. It's a, a much more comfortable. And we pack in so much um, head stuff, you know, reframing stuff into that 14 days that by the time you get to that, that um, step over the line, it just makes a whole difference in, in your, the way that you think about stopping drinking alcohol. That's the, the key is, you know, not stopping where you're freaking out about things and going, oh, my God, how am I going to last with this? You know, um, it's having that frame of mind where you know you can do it, you know. So <clears throat> uh, where were we? 
these things are flying up now. I think I'm way behind. Um, I'm sorry if I missed out on people. Um, Esther's going to join me as well in in a in a little bit because uh, she's she's my partner, um, and she's I think she's seventy days alcohol free now, uh, and she's been with me since the beginning. So uh, I'm going to get her to come in in a minute and just have a chat, and tell you how she's doing. And so, um, Tony B, uh, best way of stopping drinking completely is to read Alan Carr's book. It's a good it's a good a good read, I tell you. Um, Yin Hugo uh, says thanks for your tips I think he, I have to reassess my reactions to those urges it's getting late where I am so I call it a night yeah good night Jin uh, take care of yourself uh, Tony B 60 days sober after 25 years of drinking thanks to your videos Kevin and my kids were my motivation to stop altogether I think if you can use your children it's one of the best things to do you know um, Jin Hugo says, we'll try my best for a longer stretch of sobriety. Yeah. Uh, Paul G, thank you, Kev. Uh, do you find living in a sunny country makes it easier for you to stop drinking? I think I would have done it anyway. You know, it's, um, you know, the, the dark evening is really depressing and make the, the temptation to drink more things. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, again, it's one of those things. I mean, you've got to deal with what you've got, but you've also, you know, you can change what you've got as well. Um, you know, I had the same thing in Ireland, uh, to be honest. And when I go back on holidays to see my son, um, they don't do me the, the power of good seeing the, the dark days. But it's it's what you make of it, you know. Um, you know, so for me, it was the best decision I ever made in my life was to move to, to a different country. So if you're not happy where you are, you, you've got to move, you know. It's a short life. Um, I know it doesn't make a huge amount of difference way you know in the moment when i'm telling somebody to stop drinking and they, they are where they are and they can't make the move now but you know you, you've got to do what you can um and it, it is it, a lot of it 90 percent of this stuff 95 percent of this stuff is going to be mind over matter you know so what you think in your in your mind because no matter what happens outside the dark nights the you know people have an excuse for drinking at any time of the year um when it was dark and it was raining outside, I definitely wanted to drink. But when it was sunny and um, it was the middle of summer, I definitely wanted to drink because I wanted to have that that feeling. So it, it doesn't matter what time of the year it is, you're going to find an excuse if that's what you have. Um, and if it doesn't matter what time of the year it is when you're not drinking, you know, you you find an excuse to 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 be happy then and to think positively and to uh, pursue the things that you want to do. So, you know, um, Jason Williams says 20 years of um, cutting down and, and breaks only maybe drink more. It does. I mean, cause you, you, you get to that stage where it's like a vicious circle. You get back to day one again and you feel good about having cut down, but gradually it comes back in and then it saps your energy. It saps your willpower, it saps your self-confidence, and it makes it that little bit less likely that you're gonna you're gonna succeed the next time, and then a little bit less likely that you're gonna succeed the next time and the next time and the next time. And it's just a mind fuck, you know. So um Paul Ziep says, I can really love your videos. I'm 42 years old, and this will be my third Christmas alcohol free. Uh, it started to take me down a real rocky road and getting gout two years ago was the final straw. Good for you, Paul. Um, Steve Clark, same here, Jason. Moderation is a dead end. Yeah. Linda Shankland, yes, my brain kind of woke up and ran with these ideas of things to do, positive things. I did a lot of reading, watching motivational videos, all kinds of stuff. That's it. I mean, motivational videos are one of the best things to watch. And it doesn't have to be. I mean, you can find motivational videos now about anything. Um, like I say, I'm, I'm taking up climbing for the first time at 53 years of age and uh yeah, it's given me a buzz i haven't done any climbing yet i bought a few bits and pieces um we're gonna go up to uh uh one of these wall gyms in uh, elche it's the next town up from us after christmas and and get some lessons um but yeah it's it's just one of those things it's um uh 
but I've been watching a lot of motivational videos just from people who are claiming young people, you know, who are saying, well, I, you know, like I've done this, I've done that. When you talk, I watched this guy, a uh, movie called Free Solo. If you haven't watched it, what a, a blast of a movie. Um, documentary style movie, just watching this guy free climbing this 3,000 foot uh, face in Yosemite Park. Um, but what he's talking about, you know, he's totally focused on doing the one thing as climbing this, this um, you know, climbing in general. Um, but he doesn't drink, you know, very rarely drinks. And, you know, when he does, it's not, it's something that he would do just because other people are doing it. He'd take a sip and that was it, you know. Um, he's watching his body. He's watching his, what he puts inside of his just you know from that perspective inspirational so you can find inspirational stuff almost anywhere um uh paul says uh i'm now mentally and physically stronger than i've ever been trained six days a week i'm a better father husband all around human being and never go back onwards and upwards yeah that's it paul uh, i'm the same i'm doing something you know at least five five days a week anyway, most of the time, six days. Mm. Um, Jeff Camarda said, but most of the friends at the pub um, you had will not be the friends any longer. I don't blame them. They're simply different paths now. One year, three months clean. Thanks for the wisdom, Kevin. No worries. Uh, yes, look, you know, my friends were the same thing. When I wasn't drinking, the problem with your mates in the pub is they don't want somebody there who's not drinking because you're not on the same wavelength as them anymore you know they want somebody there who is uh who is on the same path as them you know who, who gives them a pat on the back for what they're doing you know the amount of times that we used to say oh jesus how, how many pints can you drink is that all um you know take the piss out of each other because you know i remember saying you know hangovers and you'd say to some old guy had a horrible hangover this morning how many pints do you drink oh 15 jeez I was only starting out then. You know, that's the kind of mentality of people that, you know, and as you say, it's not the people in the pub, it's not the the, the friends, it's they're leading their own lives and whatever their choices are, whatever, you know, but it's not my choice anymore. And sometimes you have to, that's when you look at the control aspect of your, your mind, people are the thing that you can control the least, but they're the thing that if you can get people on your side that are helping you, um, it's such a great boost in your in your life. Uh, but people in pubs who are doing the habit that you're doing, they're never going to help you doing that kind of stuff because they don't know how to help themselves. So, um, Uriah Coffee says, um, "I love your videos. Deserve um, your videos deserved you on YouTube cable years now. Um, helpful videos. Thanks. I tell people in hey rooms sometimes about you. Cheers, Uriah." Uh, Dito Curad, uh, my D-Day was the 3rd of October, discovering my wife having an affair for almost a year. Oh, my God. That must have been tough. Uh, blaming it on my drinking habit. That day I stopped drinking and on my way to be the best possible version of me. That's where I'm headed. You know, that's the life to live. That's the goal to have in your life is to be the best possible version of yourself. That's what our transformation is all about in Habits Unplugged is that is heading towards that. Um, that thing of getting to that best possible version of yourself, living the best possible life that you can live is a great life to live. You know, it's not a goal in, in the sense that you're ever going to get there because when you, when you are experiencing life like this, you, you move forward and your life keeps getting better, but the, the, the goalposts keep getting a little bit further away. If you get what I mean, you know, as you get more experience in life and you, you see what's available and out there to do, this is a great world um you know but it's um uh yeah so um Niall Rochford says lying here hung up watching this two kids downstairs wondering where I am some dad me time to change yeah that's that's exactly what I had that feeling I was sat there hung over um watching my kid who was 21 but he's still my kid walking along a beach um where we'd been wrestling the night before pissed out of our heads um because i was taking him out and forcing him to go around pubs uh and he'd lost his his uh his ipad no the small little things what do you call them so hey yes hi you come in yeah this is esther 
She's my uh my other half. Partner in crime. Partner in crime, yes. Hi, so everyone. Got a lot of uh, a lot of people. I know, I was online as well, so, and listening a bit in the back. So yeah, um so yeah, we've I'm not going to get too many more of these. I'll do another one of these in, in, in January and stuff like that. But I just wanted to talk to Esther about because she's, are you 70 days off now? I'm actually uh, 73 days. So, yeah, <laughs> I just checked. We were doing it earlier on. So many days she goes, oh, I look for the, the apps, you didn't know. But that's the point, isn't it? When you get past a certain point in this journey, you just forget about the days. Yeah. But after seven years, um, you know, with first Christmas, we were saying now that, that we've got a, um yeah, alcohol there's no alcohol in the house no so mm -hmm. hey esther hi Linda. Linda. <laughs> Jazzy hi, Jazzy. Rose. hi everyone and two packs that's probably hey esther as well i know i mean i speak a couple of languages but that's not mine <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i'm um yeah it's now 73 days but uh because last month we were actually with our moving house in your trip to new york yeah. and I just got some tea, sorry. I, uh, oh, yeah. Oh, I should bring in my cup, actually. <laughs> mm, I wonder where the teapot was going. Congratulations, Esther. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, so that's... Because um, I am watching the daily videos of the the 180 program. Because, as uh, no, yeah, Kevin and me are together for... for 11, 12 years. <laughs> oh my God, I'm just as bad as anniversaries going. <laughs> a couple of years anyway. But I've been on the sideline with his journey. And so it wasn't, uh, yeah, for me, it was like a, a proper decision. I knew it was going to happen one day that I really uh, uh, wanted to stop drinking. And I've seen what good it had done for, for yeah. Kevin, you know, and I, my drinking went different anyway. It got um, uh, it got less and less, and there were more and more days that I wasn't actually drinking. Mm. But then there were still days that I uh, could easily do a bottle of wine or two or sort of. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know exactly. He stopped counting at one stage. But I did say as soon as I was ready that I was going to do the 180 program. Yeah. And yeah, it is just brilliant. It is brilliant. It's not only because, as you always say anyway, quitting drinking is don't put it in your mouth. Keep it out of your mouth, yeah. But it is the whole program sort of around it. Building, it's not even building yet. It's discovering yourself right. again in a new way. Because there's that's interest, the journey, isn't yeah. It, you know? It's really, it's been because I actually, um, I'm, uh, I just picked up yoga again, Yin Yoga. The fact that now I'm actually for the last two years, I'm going, uh, how many? Three to five times even to the gym. Now, if you told me that's five years ago, I would have laughed at you. <laughs> and now I felt guilty with moving house that I had no time to go to the gym. And it's just, yeah. So what do you think of Christmas then? Your first Christmas without alcohol? Yeah, bring it on. Yeah. I'm looking forward to my meal. Yeah. <laughs> That's the the only time we've got now at Christmas is going to be when I go to my sister Louise's house mm. and they've got they were four four little girls. Well, four little girls. They're a bit bigger now, your nieces. Yeah, <laughs> but they're four four yeah. kids, so that's the, the only time we're going to see any any, any yeah. alcohol. And even there, I don't think it's going to be a big thing. Oh, I see. Once, you know, so. So yeah, so yeah, yeah, that's that's uh, that's where we're gonna see it now, and uh, yeah, yeah, no, and it is. I I said uh, in a previous uh, thing as well. Um, that would be the one thing at your sister's house. I know. I what I was drinking was red wine. Yeah. Red wine was my juice, kind mm. of a thing, and uh, I'm that uh, fancy. I mean, I don't see myself like a wine knowing person and whatever. But um, I do. I w knew that at um, Louise's house, Kevin's sister's house, there would be several different bottles of wine. Like not really a tasting, but like proper, proper wine. <laughs> and I was always looked forward to it. And now 
it will, probably will be a little moment that I'm like, everybody is tasting the wines and I'll be tasting the teas. Yeah. <laughs> but then, I mean, nobody tastes the wine. It's like, they, no, you know, it's... everyone pours it out, they drink it. You know? I know, it's like, yeah. It's the illusion. I, it's gets drunk and mind, then, yeah. I mean, this, you know who's going to get drunk and, and who's not. Yeah. You know? and that's know. it. You know, and it's going to be the same old shit, mm. same old year. Yeah. For them. Yeah. For us, it's going to be different. Oh, no hangover. <laughs> no hangover. Especially for a step. Year's but just all out. the stuff that you're going to do, you know, it's just, it's all <laughs> unreal. So. Uh, anyway, look, we're going to close it down because it's uh, heading up to um, to the hour. Um, if you that book that I was talking about earlier on, somebody put it in there it was Alan Carr's uh, How to Control Your Drinking Alcohol. But there's a free book down below as well that you can get in the comments, and there's um, there's a, a trial for the Mastermind Coaching Program if you want to take that. That's a you can get it that for a dollar for um, for seven days. And next week we've got a a deal coming up with the yearly program and the lifetime. So uh, I'll stick a video up on that. So listen, um, have a have a good Christmas and um, and a new year, alcohol free Christmas and a, and a new year. And uh, I'll speak to you again soon. We'll speak to you yeah. again soon. So, happy Christmas, everyone. Happy Christmas, everyone. And um, uh, take care of yourself. Thanks for everyone for for joining in. I really enjoyed uh, these questions. Always a good buzz doing these. So I'll try and do them more often. All right. Take care of yourself. Uh, onwards and upwards. Bye now. Bye. Bye. Take care. All right.